everyone, welcome back to Becca's Book Club. Hi friends. Beatrice is joining me today and we're continuing to read through the storybook Bible. Beatrice, do you already know this story? It's Noah's Ark. Yes, my Sunday school teacher told me that there were two elephants on the ark. How did they fit? Well, this was a really, 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 really big boat. Although it's not really a story about a boat. It's a story about starting over and God keeping his promises. Let's read. Sounds good. A new beginning. Time passed and many people filled the earth. Everyone everywhere had forgotten about God and were only doing bad things all the time. God's heart was filled with pain when he saw what had happened to the world he loved. Everywhere was disease and death and destruction and all the things God hates the most. Now Noah was God's friend, which was odd in those days because no one else was. Noah listened to God. He talked to God. He just loved being with God like you do with your best friend. Noah, God said, things have gone wrong. People have filled my world with hate instead of love. They are destroying themselves and each other and my world. I must stop them. First, we'll build an ark. Do you know how to build an ark? Neither did Noah. Luckily, God knew and he would show them. So here's a picture of Noah. And then here he is again, and he's got plans. And it says here, food, question mark, bedding, question mark. I guess he trusted God to help him figure it out. A storm is coming, God told Noah, but I will rescue you. I promise. I'll send the animals to you, ones that creep and crawl and slither and slime and gallop and hop and bound and climb and don't forget to pack everyone's food. The storm is going to wash away all the hate and sadness and everything that had gone wrong and make the world clean again. God had thought up a way to keep Noah safe, but Noah would have to trust God and do exactly what God told him. So Noah built an ark, short for a very large boat, and Noah's neighbors came out to watch and point and laugh because they didn't believe Noah about the boat, or the storm, or needing to be rescued. And Noah must have looked rather silly. His boat was in the desert. The desert was nowhere near the sea, and there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Why would anybody need an umbrella, let alone a boat? So here's everyone that came to look. What a weird sight that he's building a boat in the middle of the desert. But Noah didn't mind so much what other people thought. He minded what God thought. So he just did what God told him to do. Then the ark was ready. God said, all aboard. And Noah's family and all the animals climbed inside. Then God shut the door. There's all the animals. Oh, there's Joshi. And it started raining for minutes that joined into hours, that joined into days, that joined into weeks and weeks. And the rain joined into puddles, that joined into rivers, that joined into lakes, that joined up into a flood that covered the whole world. Their boat had once seemed so big, suddenly seemed very small. But in the middle of the huge storm, in the crashing waves, in all the thunder and lightning, through it all, God was with them and he kept them safe for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Finally, the rain stopped. The sun came out and Noah threw open all the windows. Hooray, everyone shouted. Noah sent his dove out to explore and it wasn't long before she brought him back a fresh olive leaf. Everyone knew exactly what that meant. She had found a tree and land the water was going down. At last, the boat landed quite suddenly on top of a great mountain. As soon as it was safe, God said, out you come, and so they did, everyone skipping and dancing onto dry land. 
The first thing Noah did was to thank God for rescuing them, just as he had promised. And the first thing God did was make another promise. I won't ever destroy the world again. And like a warrior who puts away his bow and arrow at the end of a great battle, God said, see, I have hung up my bow in the clouds. And there in the clouds, just where the storm meets the sun, was a beautiful bow made out of light. It was a new beginning in God's world. It wasn't long before everything went wrong again, but God wasn't surprised. He knew this would happen. That's why before the beginning of time, he had another plan, a better plan, a plan not to destroy the world, but to rescue it, a plan to one day send his own son, the rescuer. God's strong anger against hate and sadness and death would come down once more, but not on his people or his world. No, God's war bow was not pointing down at his people. It was pointing up into the heart of heaven. The end. Can you believe that God didn't have very many friends? That doesn't make any sense to me. God is such a good friend to us. I know, it's hard to believe that there was only one family, only one family in all the earth that actually wanted to talk with God and hang out with him and be his friend. Nobody on earth cared what God thought? Nobody. They did really, really bad things here on earth. That's why God decided to start over and give everything a new beginning. Hey, have you ever had to start over on something? Yeah, lots of times. It can be really hard to start from scratch especially if you put in all the effort the first time. I had to start over at a new school and make all new friends when I moved to a new city. You know what? That could be really hard. How did you do that? I trusted God that he would give me new friends, that starting over was a new chance to make even more friends. That's a good way to put it. I think God wanted even more friends on earth too when he started over. Did it work? Yeah, I think so. Two of them are sitting right here. That's true. You know, Beatrice, God put the rainbow in the sky to remind us that no matter what, God has promises for us here on earth. That's like my picture. I drew God's promises coming down from the sky. Wow, Beatrice, you did such a good job. I love that you have all of these hot air balloons that are coming down from the sky. And they're headed towards earth. And they're all beautiful rainbows. You did so good. Every time I think of God's promises, I think of a rainbow. Me too, Beatrice, because it's a sign that he won't ever break his promises. If he said it, he'll do it. That's like 1 Thessalonians 5.24. It says, he who has chosen you is faithful. I like that. Well guys, we gotta go. Me and Beatrice are going bowling. See you guys later. Have a good week. Bye guys, thanks for tuning in. See you next week.